Good day everyone. So this is a United States quarter. It's just a piece of metal that has a pattern stamped on it. That makes it United States currency. But I wonder, how hard would it be to make my own currency from scratch, from metal to stamp? Let's find out. Now I've seen coin stamps that you can find for several hundred dollars. I don't want to spend that, so I'm going to try to make my own coin stamp out of three pieces of metal. This is a piece of steel that I bought at the metal store. I think what it's designed for is to, to be a hooking device. You weld that onto a metal box or something and you can hook it and pick stuff up with it. I think that's what it is. But from these come these little punches, these little metal corks, whatever, the leftovers. So I'm going to use this, this, and this to make a metal coin stamp. And when these pieces of metal are punched out, it becomes concave on one side. I need to flatten that off before I do anything. So while grinding that down, I realized I'm grinding it really crooked. You can't have that. So I'm gonna set it in place, and then while it's lodged in here, this thing, whatever it's called, I'm gonna sand it down so it's flat with that. We have a top and bottom part of the stamp, nice and shiny, ready to engrave. I have no idea how to engrave a pattern in here. I've never engraved anything in my life. Well, let's try it anyway. So I need to put a pattern on the metal, so I took a piece of tape and just traced around a picture of a grizzly that I found online. That leaves a small indentation of the bear that I can then tape to the coin and hopefully transfer that pattern to the metal. It is hard to see, so printing it and gluing it might have been better, but this is the option I chose to try. trying to be sure to leave the eye a little proud so when I do the indentation it'll look like an eye hole there. So we have kind of a crude bear engraved in our metal, but I'm gonna try that, see how that works. We'll call this the head side, now we need the tail side. So this one I'm gonna actually draw out the design and then super glue it to the metal instead of trying to imprint on tape. So I thought it'd be a good idea to stamp the year on there, and I stamped it on so crooked I can't stand it. Let's erase that.
I think gluing the paper on is the better method. Okay, so we got our heads, the bear, and our tails across with the year stamped on it. I think we're ready to make a coin. So I need some clean metal that's gonna go in between the die. If you look at a quarter, it fits in there with a little bit of room to spare. When I stamp it, it's gonna widen up a bit. So I need a little bit extra thickness. And I want this to be a hefty coin. So I took some quarters, super glued them together, and I think about three thick will give me a good hefty coin. That'll fit well. Well, this idea was a total fail. The edges aren't perfectly even and they're ribbed for grip to begin with. And it grabs the sand so much that it just tore out every one. Look at that, every one just ripped out of the sand. Terrible. Honestly don't need these blanks to be that clean to begin with. I'm gonna cast it as is and clean it up from there. So for metal, I got leftover Nordic gold, so I'm gonna make Nordic gold coins. It's not uncommon to have metal run off and onto the floor when you're pouring. This is why I always put sand down around my flask to try to protect the area, but you'll see why it's important to have a thicker layer than I have here. This is what happens when molten metal comes in contact with concrete. There's a lot of moisture in concrete and the heat causes the water to go to steam and it explodes just like a popcorn kernel to put the sand down thicker next time. It's kind of scary when the cement explodes like that. That's why I always wear this when I pour. And leather. When I was pouring it, I didn't see anything come out the vents and it dawned on me, I didn't vent any of those coins. I know sand is porous, but <laughs> I don't know if any of that took. If that worked, it's just luck. Can't believe I forgot to vent it. So not ideal, but at least we got three blanks that cast properly. So we'll work with what we got. I am amazed at how detailed sand casting can be. I literally just made quarters. I mean, those are United States quarters, 1985. That's amazing.
Highly illegal to counterfeit money. Do not take this as a lesson to counterfeit money. I'm not counterfeiting money. Don't counterfeit money. So I'll get these cleaned up and grind off the faces just so I don't get in trouble with the feds. It's three coins thick anyway, so not really counterfeit. And besides, I'm not actually trying to pass it off as currency. That's the only thing that would really be a problem. So after all that, we finally have our blank. I figure with my makeshift dies, I'm gonna need all the help I can get. So hopefully by heating it up, the metal is a little more malleable. So the first strike was a fail. It, the die went crooked. So it got just the hind leg of the bear. So I can't have the dies flying all over the place when I strike it like that. So by tapping a few holes, I figure I can screw it into the log and that might shore it up a bit. I tried to make a few more blanks quick just so I can practice a bit more with my setup. I overfilled most of these, but a few of them were salvageable, so I got some extra blanks to work with. I ended up just putting them in my furnace to get them red hot. The blowtorch wasn't quite powerful enough. So did it work? Moderately, yeah. I don't know that I quite reached the intricacy of the ancient Greeks, but we did make a new currency. I think we'll call it Grizzcoin. The top die for the bear did work better than the bottom die for the cross. And I also learned that if you stamp your numbers or letters in there the right way on your die, they come out backwards on your coin. It's a mirror image, so it has to be reversed lesson learned. Now to make this better, just having a bigger, beefier apparatus would make it a lot better for stamping the coins. But we were able to take some pieces of scrap metal and make a moderately successful coin die. 
I think that's pretty cool. Let me know what you think you could do to improve this kind of setup. I'd love to hear your comments. I hope you enjoyed watching that. If you did, please hit the like button, comment, let me know what you thought, and come on back for some more videos. I'll have some crazy idea for next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.